Gemini 4. For the first time, an American astronaut stepped from his spacecraft and using a small hand-carried propulsion gun, maneuvered independently in space. A new term was born, EVA, extravehicular activity. Gemini 7 and 6, two spacecraft met in orbit. The world's first space rendezvous was lifted from the realm of theory and became a historical fact. Gemini 8, another rendezvous, this time with an unmanned Agena target. For the first time, two vehicles linked up in space. Three major goals of Project Gemini, extravehicular activity, rendezvous, docking. At Cape Kennedy, the final preparations are underway for Gemini 9. In the Mission Control Center in Houston, simulations have been flown and the flight controllers are ready. The two astronauts, Tom Stafford and Gene Cernan, are also ready. Charles Matthews, NASA News Center, Houston. In the Gemini program thus far, we've made initial demonstrations of many of the program objectives, such as extravehicular activity, rendezvous, and docking. In the case of extravehicular activities, we indeed have already demonstrated that a man can go outside the spacecraft, but what we haven't done is demonstrate some of the applications. On Gemini 9, we intend to have the man stay out a very considerable length of time, such as uh, uh, two hours or more. And we do plan to have him uh, conduct very precision maneuvering during the time he's out. Uh, this requires a very fancy backpack device that controls his attitude, allows him to move from one point to another with extreme precision. These applications are things that are greatly related to such things as conducting repairs of vehicles in space or conducting experiments in space while outside the spacecraft. Now, on Gemini 8, we had planned to uh, carry on our extravehicular activities. Because of the uh, termination of that mission earlier than planned, we did not uh, conduct extravehicular activity on that flight. However, on Gemini 9, we are planning to pick up many of the things that were to be done on Gemini 8 and extend the activity even further. I might mention at this time that uh, the failure that it did occur on Gemini 8 has been analyzed and appropriate corrective action has been taken, both from the standpoint of certain changes to the spacecraft, as well as changes in some of our procedures used during flight, and we don't expect the problem to occur again. With this in mind, we're looking forward to the Gemini 9 flight and expanding the knowledge of man's operation in space. Okay, your go. Stand by one. Okay, everything seems to be going uh, real well here. The operation today has been very smooth. The system skies are happy with the data. Network data flow looks good. Gene Kranz, Chief, Flight Control Operations Branch. Thank you. Okay, the uh, Gemini mission is a mission that for many of us has many first. The One of the major items we intend to do is to prove out a new technique in rendezvous. We'll be rendezvousing during the third revolution as opposed to the fourth revolution in all previous missions. In addition, the flight crew has what they call the astronaut maneuvering unit that is retained in the adapter area of the Gemini spacecraft during the second daylight period of extravehicular activity. The crew will don this particular maneuvering unit and it will give him a propulsion capability using very small thrusters similar to the spacecraft capability to maneuver. In addition, we'll be doing, performing dock burns using the propulsion of the Agena vehicle. We'll be moving into a higher orbit uh, using this Agena capability and then coming back down to move into a orbit satisfactory for two re-rendezvous we'll be doing during the third day of the mission. Retrofire will occur after approximately 70 hours elapsed time. 
The spacecraft will be landing in the Atlantic area, the Dash 1 recovery area, similar to all previous Gemini missions. In addition, we have two new flight directors who will be working with us during this particular mission. They're Glenn Lunny and Cliff Charlesworth. Uh, Mr. Lunny worked with us in the Mercury program, both at the Bermuda site and at the Control Center, as a flight dynamics officer, and he was the flight director for the Apollo 201 mission. Mr. Charlesworth has been one of the prime flight dynamics officers for all Gemini missions so far. Uh, we feel that we're developing a new team here, and we'll be moving through with this team through the remainder of the Gemini missions. Gemini 9 pre-flight press conference, Houston. Gemini 9 is designated to be three days in length as far as the total mission and will include as a prime objectives the rendezvous with the Agena target and the extravehicular activities using the self-maneuvering unit. The secondary objectives as we have them outlined include two other rendezvous and the series of experiments of which we will perform in a continuing experiment program that MSC and NASA is carrying out. This time I'd like Gene to describe the, the basic EVA mission as it's planned. This is the start of the second day. The <coughs> EVA, of course, is primarily built around the uh, AMU uh, D-12 experiment. The uh, EVA actually will commence uh, at sunrise uh, of a day pass, and uh, the first whole day pass will be strictly uh, without a propulsion system. It will be, we will be in a dock configuration with the Agena, spending that first day pass generally uh, becoming familiar with the extravehicular environment, uh, doing some umbilical evaluations. This will all be done on a 25-foot umbilical. When I'm satisfied that, that the system is operating uh, the way it's advertised to operate and that I'm familiar enough, I'll then go to 125 feet of tether and perform what you might call transfer maneuvers or very close in rendezvous type maneuvers with the Agena, both in plane and out of plane. Uh, actually, I probably should backtrack a minute. Just prior to going on a 125 foot tether, uh, I will progress as far away from the spacecraft as I can, which would be about 40 feet, and Tom will perform, and I'll just stay there, and Tom will perform a simulated rescue maneuver to see what the capabilities of the spacecraft are to pick up uh, an EVA pilot who may be uh, without a propulsion system, who may be so far away from the spacecraft that he doesn't really care to, to come in via the tether. Well, let's see. I think this is what we started out with, and this was on egress training back in the tank, and we're, uh, this is the Gemini boiler plate. It's underwater, upside down, and here I come out. We're using the snorkel underneath you completely submerged, and you practice unstrapping, getting out uh, completely. Very good training. Hope we never have to use it. This, as I imagine both uh, most of you know, is the docking trainer, and we're looking at the Gemini uh, end of it showing the uh, various attitudes of which you can get into. This is the Agena, and of course the primary purpose of the docking trainer is to practice docking, which it turns out from the brief experience which eight had and what uh, the six crew brought back is really not a big problem. This is uh, our spacecraft altitude run. Uh, as much as for qualification of the spacecraft as it is for what we can learn and gain in the way of training. Uh, this run, of course, is preceded by a dry run in ambient uh, conditions, though we go through everything uh, that, uh, that we actually do in the altitude run. It's checking out a great many of the spacecraft systems. It's checking out the uh, ELSS or the chest pack, uh, which is vital for the EVA activity and how it operates uh, at altitude. And just, it, it's a an interface between the, the spacecraft, the extravehicular gear, and really the crew. This is the air bearing table here at, uh, in Houston that we've, uh, well, simulation, simulation for the AMU or simulation for any type of space flight is very difficult because everything in space, of course, is six degrees of freedom. Uh, in this case, uh, two degrees of, of uh, freedom uh, left, right, fore and aft, and uh, you can yaw the spacecraft, or yaw the, the AMU in this case. That happens to be the attitude controller of the AMU. 
He's capable of giving you yaw, roll, uh, or pitch. All the motions uh, in flying the AMA, a AMU have to be very delicate, sharp, pulse-type motions because it's a we're, we're talking about uh, half a foot per second in translation, which is not very much really, but when you talk about operating in a new environment uh, with this unit, it actually is quite rapid. Yes, this was our uh, egress training. We took turns alternating in the left seat. <laughs> the, uh, the idea is to, uh, both people will crawl out of the left seat because of the way the CG is set up on the spacecraft. It just naturally floats that way, so the, uh, Command pilot gets out first, and uh, he moves over to the side in the front, as you can see. And uh, before he jumps off, you get the pilot over on the right-hand side and, and play the balance game so that it doesn't tip over. And uh, then the command pilot jumps off to the right and attaches himself up to the front. And when he's all ready and we've closed and locked the hatch with a hatch locking device that's in the nose, then the uh, pilot goes up over the uh, rear end of it. Well, if no one has any questions, we'll uh, get these guys out of here. At Cape Kennedy, the crew is in the final phase of preparation for launch. In the Mission Control Center in Houston, flight controllers make ready for their vital role in the three days of Gemini 9. Soon, Gemini 9 will power its way into space. Rendezvous, docking, EVA, another step on our road to the moon.